You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another episode of All Talk with Tom and Eddie from the Hello Sport Podcast. Back for another week with another guest. And this man uh, has recently just changed clubs mid-season. He's been he's played for, I believe, the Roosters. He was a manly junior. He's played for the Raiders, played for the Rabbitohs. He now finds himself at Belmore and the Bulldogs. He's a big man. He's a good man. He's a nice man. He's a great man with a great yarn and a great story. Correct. We talk footy. We talk life. We get deep. Yep. We talk acai bowls, acai bowls. We talk pronunciations of things we don't know. We're talking to the one and only Liam Knight. Enjoy. Playing everybody. So you got that one guy that'll carry you. He starts fucking up. You go... Yeah, yeah and he was, he was rattling him. It was dying. Like, you want to win? Oh, I'm pretty competitive. We have like golf days at footy clubs and that. So we're yeah. out of the south. It's like, I'm not good. So I need to be with someone good so I can have a good day. Because otherwise I'm, I'm having a shit day. But it's almost fu- like, I thought almost as footy players, like you don't have an excuse not to be good. Like, I don't know if I've met a footy player who's not better than me at golf. Not that I've played golf with many, but you know, like we got we played with the great and powerful Steve Menzies yesterday. He's a gun, isn't he? Well, yeah, but he's like, oh, I haven't played for ages. Doo, 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 and it's like. Yeah, he's just. I don't know after how much mayo Steve was putting on that. Yeah, he could have been, been Is humble. He a weapon? I've heard he's good. He's a humble guy. So if he's heard he's good, then he's fucking really but lied in, to us. In fairness to him, he was like, I used to play a lot, and now I don't play as much because he's got a full time job and Busy, shit. Busier, busier now. Yeah. He's a lot yeah. busier. But so. like, so is golf then something that if you were to like go hard at for a period of time, like you will always, you won't drop below a certain level because that's <sighs> that's exciting to know if that's the case. I think you gotta play a while, eh? Like gotta really set that foundation. Mm. Like a couple of the boys go really well and I'm just I never really got it, eh? They, they, get, le- f- they get lessons and stuff too, they play a lot. Yeah, the lessons. You gotta commit. If you don't do it, you gotta commit. Like Who's the best you've played with? Who's gone? Sammy B was playing off three at one stage. Was Jesus. he? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's after you retire, he's playing every day. I mean he's pretty good. Uh, Benji Marshall was a gun. He was low, like low handicap, six or seven maybe. Yeah. Brace hectic as well. Yeah, he's in your scratch. So I've heard that. Well, he played in the New South Wales Open yeah, many moons like ago, the, if you recall pro, that. Pro-Am or whatever it was called. The, oh, I pro- think he might have entered the New South Wales Open, like, legit. Wow. But I don't think he played very well. Dave will be able to tell us he, how well he I actually he, went. He'd, he'd be the best I've heard about. Like, I've never seen him play. But yeah. Well, he does a little bit with golfers as well. He manages golfers. He manages golfers. golfers. Yeah. yeah. He's in that little manager game. Yeah. Mm. Have you got anything there for Bray's performance? Yeah, yeah. So he, he came into the New South Wales Open and thought he had a chance, but he hit 20 over par <laughs> in, the opening, <laughs> in the opening two rounds. Yeah. Pressure, pressure Shit, got to Yeah, him. the pressure. But these, these pros. He was doing the old, oh, usually I'm, I'm, pretty, like, I'm hitting this. Like, yeah, yeah. I've actually been playing off scratch. A lot of work. Mate, yeah. the pin placements are what fucking way tougher. They put the t- the it's like the tiger tees all the way up the back. <laughs> that extra twenty meters just fucks you. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it. I didn't even know that you move tees around until like I think you or not like you'd see them change, but like you know, there's different colored tees until you. you no, 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 no. The, the, the the flags. Oh, sorry, the, the flags. flags. Are you flags. hitting off the red? No, fuck. See, what am I hitting off? What are we? Hitting we hit off, off the whites yeah, usually. Right. Yeah, that's social. Right? That's yeah, that's about social. No, but like when you were playing, you were like, "Oh, the yellow flags mean they're this, and then the blue flags." And I was they like, do mean close middle back of the green. The flag color. Yeah, that's well, what fuck it's designed for. You change because yeah. we don't all we don't all have range finders, Tom. That's we the do. best. Like when you play with the real guys, they're yeah. like, <sighs> and you're like, "Oh yeah, what am I?" I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to use it. Mate, we get like we got him for a fucking piss day because we wanted <laughs> to wig Sebo out. So we no, bought I haven't even turned mine on. He doesn't know how to use his, <laughs> no, I don't which know is like it. classic Tom. But mate, they're addictive. Oh, you know, you end up going, how far do you reckon that tree's away? Like, yeah, just just testing your range. <laughs> your range find I everything. Bet you know. It's uh yeah, yeah. Mad, mad. So fucking yeah, 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 you buried the lead last time you when we were on your podcast. Yeah, look, we uh, turned the tables, know. I just realized. Well, but I mean, you know, we had yeah, we have you into the studio, you know, we give you waters, we we wear the <laughs> turtlenecks, we're talking talking rugby league, and then little do we know that right in front of us is a is a rabbito about to become a bulldog. Were you aware of it then? Like when we were yarning? What day was that? I can't remember what day. Maybe a Tuesday. I reckon itself. I didn't know, hey. Really? So how quickly does that happen? It happened, it happened quick because at one stage I was going and then I wasn't. And then I was again. So like I thought I was going with dogs and I was like, okay, well, it's not signed yet. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I probably would have anyway. But no, of course. <laughs> before it I don't think yeah. 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 I'm shocked you didn't yeah, tell yeah. us that um, private and information. Then it, and then it sort of died off. Like, interest died off. I must have, I think I played against the dogs in grade, mm. first grade game, and I hadn't trained all week. Had a colder zone in my ankle. I played pretty average. 
Um, and they weren't too keen. So, oh, mate, we're going to go a different direction. I was like, sweet, whatever. I'll just start looking. England was a possibility. Probably so, about. you were looking, though, like the South tell you, like, you're free to leave. Yeah, I had a chat with the coach. He's like, yeah. mate, I was like, just about next year. I and mean, he's like, um, oh, mate, it's, you know, it's no money. We're gonna, we've got young guys coming through. We've um, dedicated some funds to and guys, you know, coming off contract. And, but I've had a, I've had a rough couple of years, injuries. And mm. I know I'm not naive or, you know, delusion. I was like, I understand. Thanks for telling me. I had a good chat. So, I'm like, I'll go look for a job for next year. Mm. And then um, that's when I started looking and dogs were keen. And then they weren't. And then, they were keen again, and it yeah. all happened like like that. I signed a release on Friday night at 8 p.m. Release, signed the contract, got registered Monday. That Monday, I said goodbye to the boys, and that Monday, I was getting my my kit from the dogs. Wow, mate, it was nuts. Were you? So do you? Do you? Did you approach? Uh, what's the bloody Demetrio? Like, do you? Do you sense something's going on? Like, do they? How does that sort of that play out? That situation where you're like, I'm getting the vibe here that I'm not, or, or do they come to you and go, Hey, mate? No, nah, well, like, I was off contract, so I'm like, well, I'm, I'm looking around. Like, like I'm going to talk to him. So if he is, if he is Ken, I'm going to let him know, hey, mate, like, I'm looking around. Like, is there anything, can I stay at the club? Is there something for me? So, like, I'm obviously going to respect the club. I'm yeah. at, and the man and, and the helm. So I was like, that's what the chat was about. And then when he said, oh, there's nothing here, I'm like, okay, well, I'm obviously going to go down those routes. So yeah. like, pretty, I'm going to attack those options. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a manager? How yeah. does that work? Yeah. So he... So he just pounds the blower. He just, he's on the blower, yeah. Yeah. And then he dribbles to me and then... I'm like, mate, just when it's real, come and talk to me. Yeah. Because they do talk. Do they? they do. The managers do? Yeah, they get whispers and rumours. And I'm like, oh, mate. At one stage, I was going to play for five clubs. Really? Well, because as a and fan, then, that annoys me as well. Because yeah. we get a lot of whispers come across our desk. Yes. Well, some of the rumours are so good, though. Eh? Like, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, they're great. It's just the rugby league roller coaster. The, yeah. The whole, yeah, Chinese whispers. That yeah, we I had a fuck this. one the other day as it relates what, to Manly. What was it? Well, fuck. It has it? it has something to do with it has something to one do of with our one of our prized back rower bulls. Yeah, a big thick back rower. Oh, you don't want to lose him. Who I don't want to lose. Not lose. You don't want to lose. Who who might be going to a club that where sucks. some of his mates have signed recently from Manly. As Their well. last name say it so starts with an F. Starts with a fine now. Oh, <laughs> so you think they're going to go? Where did he go to the Tigers? Well, there's a report that there's a report. We're not going to name him. Whispers. Do you reckon his managers trying to? Put it out there so the club puts the price up. Well, listen, they better put the fucking price up because <laughs> tell you what, it's a poorly managed salary cap. The Manly City. They came out today and said it was. I well, I saw Michael uh, Carianis. From what I, from what Mestrov I, know, said it's a. It's, Mestrov's it's like, no, we're good, fine. mate. Don't you worry. From so, what I know about it, which yeah. is probably not much. But well, but it maybe just you seems do though. Poorly managed. Yeah, but you know more than we do. Yeah, yeah. which is a well, great start. It's a great starting. Much. Well, it's a great starting off point. Tom. Yeah, yeah. Because sure. at least we can refer to someone with more knowledge than we have. Correct. Or if someone goes, well, what the hell do you know? Yeah, this, that's what we're hearing. There's <laughs> some outrageous rumours about that place. So I probably can't say live and could be defamatory. Yes. yes. Well, you've actually whispered a couple of yeah, them to us yeah, last like, time, yeah. which we won't be <laughs> repeating. Record, yeah. <laughs> which, we, which we will not be repeating. Yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. So, <laughs> 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 so that's, that's, yeah, that's what's I've heard that good authority. So. Yeah. So do you, do you meet with Gus Gould? I did, yeah. And if so, what's he like? Mate, Gus is a legend, eh? He's a great guy. He's yeah. got that aura about He reminds me of Wayne Bennett. Like, so yeah. I was a massive fan of Wayne. He just has, he walks in the room and he just, you can just, you know he's there. Like, he has that aura about him. He's, when he speaks, he doesn't say much. He's like lightly speaking like this and he's talking and he just says a few things and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then you're talking like a normal conversation. And then I'm sitting there sort of like, I'm talking to Gus Gould, like we're having a regular conversation. Like, just, and then you're talking about my football and this kind of stuff. And then he goes, mm, okay, sweet. He'll be in touch. It's like real short and sharp. But so he's he's the one from the dogs talking to you about coming to the dogs. That was the first one, yeah. The first meeting with Gus, yeah. Hectic. Is yeah. the next one with Seraldo? Seraldo, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a good bloke, man. Yeah. And are you just talking shop? Like, how? What are you talking about? How you, he sees you fitting into the club? Sort of selling myself a bit, which is a really strange concept. Like, what if, what I think I can bring, what I've been up to. Like, you know, what, why are you playing reserve grade? Like, what's been going on? And like, oh, you know, obviously injury, this and that. And I just didn't hell at the start. I was breaking down a bit and. What's been going on? Where I'm at now? What I want to do? What I think I can do? Like I think you know I've come past it. Like where my where's your knee at? You know like those kind of questions that no one really knows. Like why why are you leaving the house? Yep. Uh, what's going on there? Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. What do you what do you got left in your yeah. mindset? Some mindset stuff. Yeah. Do you feel? It's almost like in the job interviews that I've had, and they're not many, <laughs> but like you feel a little bit like. I almost feel like sometimes I can't stop talking. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to, you're trying to say yourself and you're trying to say positive shit about yourself, but like, are you feeling stressed in that situation? A little situation? bit, yeah. I'm not comfortable like giving, like wrapping myself. I'm yeah. Like, I try not to minimize what I'm saying. 
And I'm also not like, what's wrong with South? I'm, like, I'm not not gonna. How do I make this not sound like an excuse? Because I don't want to make an excuse. I'm just like, oh. Demetrio's a prick. Yeah, you know, he just yeah. I don't know what it was. <laughs> nah, but um, so trying to explain it in a in a clear way. I'm like, yeah, I'm not making excuses. What happened? I just and my knee wasn't up to it at the start. I got a bit, you know, it's breaking down that kind of stuff. I was eating any inflammatories like Tic Tacs and really got real sick, and then I just <laughs> dropped off a cliff. Really? So what? Any inflammatories? What do they do to you, mate? They keep the, they keep the world going around. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, um, I but. Yeah, just my knee was struggling early on. Is um, that when you got the, the – did the I had knee reco, yeah. yeah. So I come back and I, I was probably supposed to play about, you know, a month or five weeks in, in, in cut was the, was the plan. And I come back a bit early. First game back, knee clash on the knee. like oh, real knee. knee on knee. Knee on knee. First oh, carry. The second mate. carry, I was like, awesome. Like, it, was, it was still sore. It was always sore. It wasn't good for a long time. Until recently, maybe five, six weeks ago, I started feeling okay. Why are you coming back when it's still sore? Like I, knew, I had no contract and I was like... So that's why I was though. due back and yeah. that was my due day. I was like safe, you know, like the, the, the physios were happy and that's when it was. How's it feeling? Going, yeah, it's good. Oh, like, so and it was all right. It, I was lying a bit, yeah. Like, And I was okay to play and I'll get better on. But like knee clash, bang, I went, oh, well, I took another two steps back. Yeah, right. Played you know, maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes a cup. Next week, JD goes, mate, I want to play great. And I went, oh, fuck in my head. Like, I'm not ready. Yeah. But... Mate, I'm there. Like, I'm not going to say no. I, no, I, I want. That's what you want to do as well. I'm like, I'll be all right. Yeah. So I um, just had to hang on. Um, played the first couple of games. Played all right. Played pretty good. And then, like, every day at training was a struggle. I wasn't saying anything because I wanted to keep playing. Yeah. And I was, you know, in inflame, in inflame. Stressed. My knee was in pain. Like, I was, fuck, getting home, stressed out. Yeah. Took us toll after probably, like, I got, I got sick and I played sick. Played dog shit. What <laughs> sickness? Like, is in is it, a, is it directly had, related to having too many fucking? I don't know. Like, I just was really run down. Yeah. Okay. And I think like the kill, like the inflammatories, they sort of like kill the bacteria in your gut. Like they reckon it's just like all the microbes and uh. they're not good for you. Mm. But like, mate, you wouldn't be able to find a footy player getting through a season with that one. Yeah. Or ten. Sure. Yeah. Hundred. Yeah. How many ever? Yeah. And then um, yeah, I just sort of just got sick. Played against camera. Played rubbish. And then that was it. That was it. Yeah, three weeks. I was like, had the flu, and turned into a chest infection, and turned into something else. Three and a half weeks, I was gone. Jesus. Yeah, and then I was plunked in cups, and I was like, trying to do my best to get back in. The boys are going all right. Just had that, yeah, I sort of dropped down a little bit. Mm. And I had that conversation, like, not many people looking at guys in car, and I'm like, I felt like, I'm like, am I still got it? Like, I know I'm pretty confident, you know, what I can do still, mm. but I'm not showing it either. Come back from an e I was like, I was stressing, man. Trying oh, to find yeah. a deal, like, Nowhere near my best because I had a year off footy yeah. from this and then everything else. I was like, mate, I just and I, yeah, it was it was a. Is there time. part of that that you like? And again, having zero insight into fucking what it takes to play rugby league, shockingly. <laughs> uh, but like, what a great setup. Yeah, but to like, is there any like? Would you do it differently? Would you have waited longer to come back from your injury as opposed to trying to rush it back when it was still hurting? If you had your time again, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I look. It's hard to look back and yeah. like. I wonder what I would have done. Um, I, yeah, because it was already like nine weeks into the season when I came. I was like round nine, mm. and I was like, mate, that was my goal. Like round ten, mm. like. Any any other week, it's just like I'm not playing. Like it just stress. Like I got to get back on the field. Got to yeah. get back on the field. So got to start. Got to start coming back. Even if I'm underdone, I'm playing cup. In all respect to cup, I'll get my way back. You know, I'll, I'll work through the shit. It'll be a bit sore. I'm not. On the, I'm not in like you know, not on the big screen. And, and I will get the you know, sort of play my craft and get get the confidence and stuff mm. um, out out of the big screen. And that didn't happen. Bang straight up. And I was like, oh, so I emotionally, I don't think I was ready to be honest. Yeah. So that was a lot going Hectic, on. Yeah, right. So one game was it? Did you saw two games back. And one then game of cup, straight in. Played half an hour in cup, and then I was straight uh, first. Up. And I was obviously like, it's pretty mad. I was pumped. Yes. And my goal was, I was like, oh, my, round ten, I'm playing NRL. I don't care what happens. That's my goal. And then round ten, I was playing NRL. Hectic. Magic round against Melbourne. I was like, this is what you want to play footy for. Mm. Mad crowd, mad vibe. And then I just sort of rode that for a bit, and then I just fell off. Went down. Yeah. Where, and where do you think you're at now? Do you think that? Like with everything you've just said in terms of being physically ready, emotionally ready, spiritually ready, if you want to yeah, use that word. Yeah. Like, do you think that you're back to where you were pre all the bullshit? Yeah, I reckon I'm very close. Eh? Like I've, my knee feels good, like really good. And like yeah. probably six weeks ago, I started, so I can train, I can finish this. I'm not in pain the next day. I'm back to back sessions and I feel like I'm getting, there. I just need time in the field. Yeah. And which is what I'm going to, you know, that's why I came to the dogs and they, and I, hopefully I can build that here and, and get that trust and respect from the club and, and, and contribute to winning. So I reckon I'm there now, yeah. Is there a f is there is there like a specific feeling you get when you're like, oh, I'm fucking on right yeah. now? Like yeah, I haven't I'm had it in a while. I haven't had that in a while, eh? Because like obviously in, out, up, down. Yeah. 
but it is yeah the thing is a bit slower like and you just you just feel a bit high like i don't know it's a bit out of body kind of thing you know when you're on hey yeah yeah well but we don't <laughs> we don't no, that's, <laughs> why, that's why i'm asking <laughs> yeah. like maybe maybe In when pool, i'm maybe sometimes well I'm maybe a little bit taller yeah, i don't know yeah. like it's a hard one to describe like they call it flow like the flow flow state flow state yeah yeah haven't I've probably that Melbourne game I felt a bit flow state. Yeah. And uh, that was maybe a bit of adrenaline and all the emotion of like what I'd come from the injury and mm. all the stuff I went through last year mentally and all that kind of stuff. And it was just like exactly what I'd imagine and exactly how I'd feel. And then afterwards I just cried, like with happiness. And oh, that, that, that was it. Like, so got much to, pressure on you. Just like, like, I remember after the game, right? I got to there and I was like at one stage I never thought I'd play rugby league again. And I was like, I don't know if I want to, you know, after I got my knee and I was struggling a bit. It's like, I'm done, you know, I don't know what I want to do, but it's not this. Like, just after the year before, three surgeries, come back, knee recode, like, I just went, I'm done. Like, mm. So where I was, and after the game, I remember, like, sitting back, just not talking to anyone. Everyone was, like, singing songs and just the vibe of a happy changing room and looking around, everyone's just, like, different vibes and that just positive energy in the air. I just sat back and I just started crying, like, in, like, a happy emotion. I was just... It was surreal, man. Like, from where I was to where I was there, I was just like, mate, this is it. This is why we play. That's why I play this is like I fell in rugby league for this. Like it's the best feeling ever. That's, That's sick. Cool. That's it was out of really body, cool. man. It was it was crazy. Punters and Dribbles, a podcast brought to you by our good friends at Neds. As always, shout out to Neds. Big love for Neds, Eddie. I don't know if you don't. I don't know if you don't mind me saying big love. No, huge love. Huge love, like, like gigantic also, love. You can't see it unless you're watching YouTube. But I'm doing a love heart with my hands. Yeah, like like that. Like big love. Who used to do that when they scored a goal? Was it Gareth Bale? Losers do it. No yeah. disrespect. Well, but, but we're doing it. We're, we're doing losers. it because we're trying to break the stereotype. Also, there was a UFC uh, referee, Steve Mazagati or Yamasaki, who used to do it, and he was sacked for being shit from the UFC. That's neither here nor there, and could be libelous. That could be an alleged not true. Also, no. not really. Not relevant. To, to not relevant. And the re only reason we're saying big love, gigantic love, huge love, and making love, ha love symbols with their hands yeah. even though that's considered uncouth yeah. is because neds are the best in the business neds are the best in the biz and we do love them we love their support yep. we love their service we love their attention to detail correct we love their markets yep we do we love, love their, their same markets. gamers we love their first try scorers we love their two or mores we love their last try scorers we love their lines their totals mm. tom correct now we also love the private group on there yeah, over four thousand people yep over so four thousand people it's in that the group. biggest private group on, on the ads, are we by shocked? a factor of I don't know a thousand? Did I make that up? 000. No, but that's a vibe thing. It's the biggest by a country Some, mile. Sometimes you got to put your balls on the line and and have a crack, and yep. that was my crack. Now you can join that uh, that group where we share bets and we share other bets. Um, you can join that group if you go on the Neds app. Secret passcode is Whisper Eddie. I don't want anyone else to hear. Tripler, it's Tripler, 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 Tripler. Um, and they also support the number one betting show in the country, and that's about even. So shout out to Neds. Shout out to Neds. Big love for Neds. Big love. Huge love. love. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. Do you yeah. find like the roller coaster sort of ride of uh, rugby league addictive? And the. What prompts me saying that is because we've been into the sheds at Manly for ridiculous reasons, might I add, but after a loss. and it, you well, could, well, Not just a loss either. It was a fucking but you, humping. You could hear a fucking pin drop. Like, it's Mate, scat it's in there. It's not a good place. It's not a good loss. place at all. Like, it's fucking... Especially after a bad loss. Yeah. Bad you get a hammer in. Mm. Everyone's looking around like... Mate, that camera game I told you about, mm. like after that game, I could feel it. You could just feel it. And inside, you're just like, you're sick. And, you, and there's no one's no one's looking, no one's making eye contact. And you're like, like what do I do now? Mm. Like, How long there's... are you feeling scat for in that? Like, when can you sort of go, all right, fuck it. Like, you know, that what, that was bad. Like, let's try, is it like the next day almost? Or is it when you're back yeah, at training? You sort know, of some people might go. carry things longer. I'm a couple of days sometimes. Maybe when you leave, get, like, get home, you're like, fuck, that was terrible. Mm. Do you go back and watch the games you be yourself yeah, or do yeah, you do it this yeah. the time? No, I watch the game by myself. You do? And do yeah. every do all players do that or is that I don't know. I think some would. Some would definitely, yeah. I'm not sure. But yeah, How's that, go? that must be well. Sometimes, yeah, it depends sick. how you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't watch the bad ones to be honest. If I know oh, I'll if play you had a good game, there you go, it's party time. <laughs> no, no yeah. that's smart. 
like okay games and above. Like if I know <laughs> I was absolute dog, like, well, I don't want to watch that. Like, no, I already yeah, feel, no. I, I'm already yeah. that embarrassed. You know what you did wrong. Absolutely yeah. ashamed of myself. I'll get sprayed in video Monday. Like, yeah, look, <laughs> that's enough negativity for yeah. me. Yeah. I'm going to go try and enjoy my weekend with a, you know, internally sad smile. Yeah. And then can't wait to go to the video and get absolutely hammered. Do you, do you find that draining though? The ups and downs, ups and downs. Yeah. Like, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The roller coaster is crazy, man. How do you get away from that? Um, something I really struggled with, like, until this year, I reckon. I don't know. I just, it's a bit of perspective as well. Like, it's not really, my whole identity is rugby league. I was rugby league as well. So, like, when you lose, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm shit, I'm nothing, this and that. Sometimes you feel really, really down. This year, I, thought, I just adopted, like, my perspective changed a bit. Like, it's not really defining me as a person. Mm. I'm going to get away, get away from everyone or go see a mate that just, you know, a normal mate, a normal life and just have a chat or get away from all the shit, get off social media, get off everything else and, and get amongst it. Was there a particular catalyst? I know you've, like, you've spoken about the sort of the struggles you've had and, like, you're mm. sober and all that, but, like, was there a particular catalyst, again, that you want to share? I'm not asking for anything hectic, but, like, where you were, where you felt comfortable, where that I guess it was the motivation to get you to see yourself as not just a footy player where you're like fuck i gotta change something here like it's all it wasn't yeah it was probably like a sequence of things when i first did it i was like that's probably what set me off i was like mate what else have i got like i didn't want anything else like i was i was so tunnel vision on footy and it worked to a point and then this happened i was like man, i got no degree i got nothing here like no other job i'm probably I, I, i'm nothing if i'm not a footy player that's how i felt mm. and so like i went through my little my period of struggles and then I come out on the other side and I was like, I just, I'm on a mission to like figure out who I am outside of footy and like put things in place to make sure that's actually true. Like the story I'm telling myself, you know, mm. I meet people, I started going to seminars, learning people, meeting people, putting things in place to, yeah, to have something else other than football to like concentrate on mm. and pe other people that, you know, like at the other day football's what I do and like one of the most important things, but uh, yeah, like I said, that's not, that's not going to be defining me now. Mm. How old are you? 28. Yeah, okay, so you're not you're yeah. not near the end by any means nah, of your career, but nah. yeah, you know, you're definitely of a mature age where you start going like, all right, let's try and fucking yeah, let's try and sort work out things what's out. going on. Which is definitely hard though, because I remember I was st stressing about like, what am I doing after footy? What am I doing after footy? Like anxiety and that kind of stuff sometimes. Yeah. Like, nah, I don't care. I'm just gonna train harder. Like you know, you're, just, yeah. you're stuck in this bubble of thinking. Like you know, no, no, like, you never know. You never think your career is lasting forever. But like, it's just hard to look past. What am I going to do? All I want to do right now is what I love, which is footy. Yeah. So I feel like figuring that out was the hardest thing. You, I still I, don't know. It almost feels like you can, you like footy can allow you, or professional sport even, right? Can allow you to be short sighted because you fucking got everything you need in the moment. Like where you're getting paid well, you know, and you've got your thing you got to focus on. I was watching, as I said, I was watching that Johnny Manziel doco on Netflix. Do you know the that uh, the college football? Johnny football, Johnny this football. guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he was just a fucking kid and he became like the fucking best college quarterback in the world, uh, in like, in all of America. In college. college in college. Um, fucking Heisman Trophy winner into the NFL, just fucked everything up because he was just a, a weapon who didn't give a fuck, basically. But he had all the talent in the world. Yeah. But just that idea of like, not needing to worry about the future until the future's on your doorstep and then he's like, oh, fuck, mate, I, you know, I fucked it that's up. That's too much. Like, I yeah. see, see mates of mine and other people in, in rugby league, they get to the end of their careers and they just, they really struggle because they never prepared for it. And I was like, mm. I just never wanted that to be me. And it was me. I thought that was my, like, my moment. I'm done. Yeah. Mm. And, oh, I can't handle it. And I just went like, down a really bad way. Yeah. And I think oh, it was just like a saying. I was like, if you are what you do when you don't, you aren't. And I was like, well, that hit me, eh? Like, my whole identity was rugby league. That's why I was like, who am I with yeah. this sport? So I set off on this big journey. Like, I can't drink through. i got to, like, really lock myself out of this world and, like, stop doing what I've always done, figure out what I like and who I am. And, like, it was a weird, like, spiritual journey. And I'm still on it, obviously. But, like, it was, like, the start of figuring shit out of my life. Do you have to figure that out yourself? Or is there – or do you – does the club provide any support systems in that way? Because, like – Let's face it, almost every every footy player has to go through that sort of transition at some stage or another. Yeah. Did you have to do that solo or did they, was there assistance? I, I did it solo. I, when I got out of rehab, I started um, intensive therapy. Yeah. But there are like a lot of things in, like the NRL have um, funding and stuff for psychologists and sports psychologists or just like therapists and stuff like that as well. But I knew a chick from a while back when I was like 18, I used to see when I was in a bit of trouble at Manly in the, <laughs> the days when everyone told me I had problems. I was like, I'm just 18, having fun. Like, yeah, it's all right. good. Like, shh. And um, yeah, I randomly just, it was like sort of a line. Like I ran into her, she mentioned me, hey, I'm in Sydney. We haven't seen each other in 10 years. It'd be good to catch up. And I just got out of rehab and I was like, wanted to go down this path of like, 
you know, diving into myself and she's like, oh, I'm doing this, this, and this now. I go, oh, wow, like, do you want to, can we work together? And then it mm. worked out. Like, it was just a crazy. Right, just, like, perfect time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what, I, when I started making these, like, decisions and that, that kind of stuff kept happening to me. I'm trying to meet the right people for something I wanted to do. She came in, other people, like, it was pretty. It just you opened yourself up to it and it all just started coming. Yeah, out. it just started um, walking in my path. Do you find it, do you enjoy it? Is it difficult? Like, I've been to therapy twice wise for just like you know and it was the idea of going was like oh <laughs> fuck i don't want to like even to the point where you get there and mine was very different to like intense personal shit as well like it's not but i just would be interested to know what it felt like to like in the lead up and then like the process of going through it because i've also got like i know many people who go regularly and it's like you know it's obviously beneficial yeah it's not great eh? it's not a good feeling it's also like I judge my you're like judging yourself like fuck man up like what would you go talk to someone for just bottle it up like don't talk to anyone you know that that whole stigma I like got myself that's what I'm saying to myself um, and then you get nervous like what am I gonna say what you gonna think what are they? and like you look at them they're not saying much they give me blank faces and it's all just a nerve wracking experience mm -hmm. well then you sort of like get further into it for me it was really beneficial um, not like I had a lot of shit probably stuck in me I had like a long traumatic childhood. That I'd never really addressed. Everyone sort of tell tell you stuff, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm alright, but I don't talk about. It. I don't want to talk about it. And then the more I sort of dove into, it, the more I unlock, I know unlocked, mm. which was uh, really beneficial. But yeah, it was it was an awful feeling at the time. Yeah, yeah. Were there things there? And again, I'm not asking you to go into detail, but like when you're digging into your past, where you go like, holy fuck, like I haven't thought about that for like a million years, mm. where it just sort of like comes back again. I've got people that I know who have similar situations, and like it kind of blew my mind to the concept of going like something hectic happened that they've just completely wiped from their memory and then something just pings and you're like, whoa. Yes, yeah, so I've had me I had things I've blocked out my whole life, remembered certain things like in the last nine months that I've never remembered. Crazy. Like going into those times and like dealing with what's coming up and like just honestly like spend time just crying and yeah. like things come up and like, what the fuck? Like, it was the weirdest couple months, uh, probably four months intense. Just that kind of stuff. Yeah, random memories and things. I'm like, whoa. I just suppressed and pushed down. And it just, and I imagine it feels better. Like, yeah, you go out of there. The next day, or like a couple of days later, because it's like, I feel like I wake up the next day feeling like I come off a bender. Yeah. Like your body's like heavy. Like, what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, like, yeah. It was ruthless. Far out. But Isn't yeah. that unbelievable? It's crazy the way But like, can have that. that physical manifestation, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, coming out of a bender is real life. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're alive yeah. when that yeah. shit's happening to you, bro. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, like okay. to have that sort of physical manifestation. Man, it was hectic. Going to train the next day, like, fuck. And one of the boys like, you're all good. I'm like, yeah, I can't tell you why. I'm all good. Like, I just can't tell you why. Yeah, going yeah. On. I'm, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it, but I'm okay. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing drills. You're like, yeah. oh, that's this. Man, it was like, I had to stop because it was like through the season. I was like, man, it's too much right now. Yeah, yeah, but right. Yeah, I did a good chunk and um, yeah, learned a lot about myself. And good what, for you, man. It's yeah. cool. Like, That's again, it. like there'd probably be a lot of players I imagine who would people generally, but like you know, because obviously it's relatable. A lot of players who would. Is there anyone that approached you or like to talk to you about? Yeah, I did a story like at the start of the year with Jake Duke. Yes, shout out to Jake Duke. Yeah, shout Jake out Duke. to Jake. Great Duke. man, Jake Duke. Is and, he is he Duke? People call him the Jake Duke? Duke, and I don't know. Jake Duke, I think. Oh, well, Duke? I've heard I mean, it's spelled D U K E, so it's definitely. I, I thought it could was be, Duke. Jake, no, I don't know. Because see, I don't know. This is like Akai Bowl, Acai Bowl. I say it's Dukes of Hazard. Bowl, That's, what is it? It's a sigh. A sigh? Is it's it? It's a sigh. A sigh. Mate, we can't get to the bottom. We of can't get to the bottom. It's got to be a sigh. I think well, Joe Akai. Rogan said Akai E the other day. Yeah, and he's really fucking there, through me. Yeah, he's a yank. I'm all of Who's where? What country's Akai fucking come from? Brazil. Is it Brazil? Brazilian berry. Is it really? Yeah. Because I, listen, I was going to say Hawaiian because that's the first place I had no, one, but yeah. that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Must be there. You know the other one that I heard? That I, you know Guarana, which is in like energy drinks and shit? Yeah, yeah. I heard someone pronounce that as like, or something. <laughs> I was like, get <laughs> fucked. Isn't what that, are we that's talking about? Yeah. Well, are we shocked that there'd be that, uh, that we're know, getting it wrong? A Spanish this. berry, maybe as a yeah, it hasn't a really Spanish quite, inflection. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just shifted into yeah. our vocabulary. So Surely fluently. it's Garana, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Garana. <laughs> my pommies get me a like like a like yogurt. Oh, yogurt. Dude. You, have you heard urinal? Yes, oh, I have. Oh, urinal. Dude. First no. time I heard that, mate, yeah. I lost it. I was like, "What yeah. did she just urinal, say?" Urinal, get fucked with urinal. It's urinal. Also, <laughs> it's oh, is that not. Sam Burgess? Sure. It's Big Tommy B. Oh yeah. yeah. Also, pasta. 
Yeah, no. Pasta, no, pasta, pasta come on, mate. dude. It's pasta. That, that probably almost stopped you going from England. Yeah, yeah honestly, I, I, I don't know if I can cop The guys can't even speak the language they supposedly, like, they speak it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Broken. No. Fuck yeah. the English. <laughs> Did you come up with anything there for Akai? Yeah, yeah. So I've got the, the Google pronunciation. Have a listen. Oh, why didn't that work? Fuck, Dave. Uh, Come on, right. mate. It's basically Asai. The, the pronunciation says A-S-A-I is how you should pronounce Asai. it. Asai. Okay, Asai. is that what you have? That's what I was okay. saying. Okay. All right, there you go, 1-0. All right. Sometimes, sometimes they try and put Asai. Like, That's what I was. I was Asai or Akai. Dude, Asai is so easy. Yeah, Asai. Asai. Yeah. Asai. Asai. Oh, there was a bit of an E. A bit of an Asai. 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 Asai is so much easier than Can you Akai. please also, Akai. and this is also, we just had this on the podcast, can you just look up the vermicelli noodle? Thing as well, oh, vermicilli, yeah. vermicilli, vermicilli. Is it vermicilli? I don't know, dude. But he's he's one from one. He is so. one from one. And vermicilli <laughs> rolled off the tongue real well. Vermicilli, like isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't be trusting my vermicelli, man. No, <laughs> no way, bro. <laughs> Don't just, trust it. Just quality, absolutely froth of eh? Oh, oh really? Mate, good. I could go two and eight. I've never had one. What? Really? Oh. You've what? never had one. Had one. Where what? are you living, mate? I do. I'm living in Bondi. You're living in Bondi. Bondi. So don't go to Bondi. Go to this place in Maruba Beach. Yeah. This guy is legit. Is old pommy guy. Okay. Much a year off, but like, just give yourself a bit of extra yeah, space. Yeah, some extra time. time wise, but like, he he told me about the pro because I said to him, I go, mate, why is yours so much better than everyone else's? He run me down the process. Okay. He freezes it. That runs it through the machine and then melts it down and does it again. And I don't know, in that process... Double processing. Double processes it, yeah. Okay. Puts a bit, maybe a bit extra love into it. Yeah, right. Well, that, love, that, love goes a long mate, way. Love, love, uh, love, love conquers all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Was that on your gram? I feel like I saw you posing with some Maasai on your Maybe, Instagram. probably, yeah. yeah. So so like is it, do you know the name of it? Can we shout him out or you can't even remember it? I, I honestly want to look it up because I want to give the guy the, the Yeah, we'll give him a plug because I'm going to have to go it. there for my first it's like, it's if, if you're a two-a-day guy yeah. and this is the best no, in the I business. Could go. I'm, not, I'm not ever going two-a-day. But your but spirit could, wants could, to. Ha- yeah, your mate. Your spirit wants I've got to fight my urges daily to not get one a day. Like I'm like, mate, you know what? Like 20 bucks down a side, probably not going to hit it. Are they good for you? Yeah, they because we're on a bit of a shred at the moment. We're not sure. They're very high in sugar, but like, well, you know, what kind of what, what do we look what do we look at that good for you? Like they're high in antioxidants, like they're super fruit, but like yeah, they're right. high calories. I don't need high calories at the moment. I need yeah. well, not when you're burning them. You no. Can, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be, you're gonna you burn them. You can get some gluten free um, you know, muesli or whatever do you else. Not know if gluten boat. free makes a difference other than it just tastes like shit. Unless you're gluten intolerant. <laughs> well, do you know what I did the other night? <laughs> yeah, unless you're silly, you're probably gonna be pretty appreciative. I, I am on a shred, right? But on the weekend my You have lost weight, buddy. You reckon? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, whatever, thank you. That means a lot. On the weekend when my wife was away and I was with the girl and I was feeling sorry for myself because we had a huge Friday. I <laughs> ordered ice cream on Uber Eats and they, I fucking in my, you know, haze, ordered a vegan ice cream and I'm like, oh. fuck it, Tom, don't worry. Like, just have it. Just have it, mate. And I had just like three or four scoops and fuck this, threw it out and then ordered more ice cream. In. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't actually eat dairy, so I don't, there are some good vegan ice creams out there. <laughs> Not the yeah, no, dairy's one. My, my, my wife, Ella's like, she's she, she sort of, you know, she likes to dip her toes in those waters and I've had a couple ben of Ben and Jerry's ones. vegan ice cream, Not take it. it from me, sucks ass. But Respectfully. I found that at their sideball place. Yeah. If you anyone's ever in Maroubra, it's called Mackay. Mackay, I don't know, Mackay, Mackay. Or Masai. Or Masai. It was a K, M-A-K-A-I. Okay, right. Mackay. Mackay. Sea balls. Mackay sea balls. Okay, right. balls. Mackay sea balls. Cross okay. from Maruba Beach there, honestly. Done. You're missing I'll out. That's, that's what, I'll go there for first my first one. one. It's going to be I'll your first one. Then you just, there. everything other than that, you're like, oh, it's, it's okay. Yeah, okay, sweet. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Go go weather tomorrow? Go down there and pop your cherry, man. Yeah, I will. Yeah. That'll be nice. Let me know, how the, let me know how the cherry feels popped. That's it. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll let you know. You'll be the first person. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you a photo. Yeah, sweet. So how are you settling in at Belmore anyway? Yeah, it's good, man. I'm liking it. Um, it's a good club, hey. Mm. It's a good club. Proud club. Proud club, yeah. Got a lot of history. Like, it's a bit like It reminds me a bit like South. So proud history. They call it the family club. I get that vibe. Um, it was definitely strange. Like... One day I'm at South, next day I'm at the Dogs. Yeah. Have you so, ever had anything like that quickly transition in your career? Not that quickly. Yeah. I have changed clubs when I was at the Roosters. When I, I was there for about six months before I got pushed out the door. And I mid, mid, mid-season mid switch during like June 30 to Canberra. And that was weird. But not with like five games to go in the season. That was still halfway through the season. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, but it was similar, similar concepts. Um, so, yeah, I was, it, just, it was the biggest wig out. 
Yeah, right. Um, when you get there, you just compare and everything to like yeah. the old club, yeah. And it's almost like, oh, we did <laughs> yeah. the, oh, like not like oh, we do this, like oh, we do it. I'm like, it's not we anymore. Like I gotta stop saying us and we. And yeah, like, but it's, it's just change. like it's hard to change. Like a day ago, I was at South, and now I'm here. Do yeah. you go through like like propaganda, sort of like overhaul? Like do you have to sit down and watch like the history of the club and like <laughs> you know, like what little, mean? Like, who's this? Minute, That's Dean Pay. Like here's your, no, here's you got your ten minute introduction video. Go sit in there and then we'll write down the prompts and give you a quiz. Nah, nothing like that. Also. Like in fairness, you probably thought you'd have a couple. Maybe you might have had the rest of the season to learn the team song. You win the first game, you get there. Oh yeah, how was that? I saw, that? You, in the team. I saw you in the video, sort of being like, but apparently that song's newish. The one, the new oh, one, really? it's a newish song. They I'm not changed sure. the song. I'm not sure the date it was released into the into the group. Into the but world. they were saying like, oh, who knows it? Because like. Someone starts it like they say, and then we we go, and then like the one person that's the leader of the song, like you know, starts yeah, it right, up. okay. And um, even with the start, like I don't know what he's saying, and everyone's straight away onto it. I'm like, so I had a little bit of well, nah, no idea, <laughs> looking around like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she, like, are you are you spo- are you expected to practice that on your own terms? Well, I might have to get the song in the sheet and sit at home and like you know read, read through it. it. Yeah, yeah. Is there practice sessions and stuff? No, nah, nah, nothing nah. like that. It's just, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Like, it's just like a when I got to see how some of it start. Like, here's this. I don't even remember ever like looking at it. You just sort of like try your best. We're winning a few games. You try and get little bits of. Maybe I did read it. It was a while back. Eventually, you start on the so outside, and then you come one of the yeah, inside. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that middle. was the thing. I remember looking down. I was in a blue jersey. I was like, when did this happen? Yeah. Like, in like six days, like it was just a, the whole week was a blur. We went, went straight into an away trip, got my jersey, like a presentation. I was like, mate, this is still a spin out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Everyone's like, you're clapping, you're getting the speech, and it's mad. But it's just like you're sitting, like almost like I'm watching myself in this situation. I'm yeah. just like, does it feel? Does it feel a little bit like first day at school? Like you're looking for. I feel like I didn't shit. win the game. Like I felt like I was playing in someone else's team. <laughs> Like yeah, I, I yeah, won the game yeah, and I was yeah. like, "This is awesome." The boys are happy. Looking at the fans, you know, they're blue. They're in blue. I'm in blue. Yeah, I'm in blue now. Cool. And after the game, I'm like, I don't think I won the game. Like, yeah, I, mean, I just like sort of subbed in someone's team, someone else's team. That's yeah. funny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like they're short on numbers. Yeah, I just filled in. I'm on loan. Like, yeah, or like, like you were playing. Here for six you know, like the, you know, like you, when you're in the junior footy or soccer or whatever, and it was like the team you're playing didn't have enough. Yeah, so and like, oh, we're yeah. gonna have to take one from the other. Oh, position. yeah, we need some. Like, what the fuck? Why am I going over? It's like, sorry, dude. It's yeah. your like, turn, Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the song, everything. I was just like, mate, it's just, yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome, and it was just all weird, mashed at the same time. Not blur, to jump yeah. back, but just realizing then that, like, when you, like, Dimitro's like, we don't have a spot for you next year. But that doesn't mean you fucking go now necessarily, nah. right? So, nah. like, how's that go? Like, do you just mm. go? Do you go? All right, sweet. I'm just gonna go explore my options, or is he like, mate, you can fucking literally go whenever you want? Like, how but, does that? That wasn't even a comment. It was like, oh, mate, you're nothing here for next year. I'm like, if you, if you need any help, you know, let me know. We'll have a chat. Um, obviously, give you a recommendation, all that kind of stuff. And I went sweet. And you're usually, obviously, I just sign a contract with someone else for next year, and mm. that'll be the end of the season with this club. And then I'll start the preseason, say goodbye, everyone, get the normal goodbyes, and then present night, whatever it is, and then start preseason at the club. But this one was like, you know, if I come, if I, if the dog's there, like come this year as well. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like, whatever, I'm all in. If you want me, I'm with it. Whatever you want me to do, I'm all in for that. And um, just sort of like, yeah, like having that fight. I just jump, jump, jump. Best thing for me, I do. I got to do what's right for me. And then yeah, I just sort of jumped and landed. I'm in, I'm in blue colours. I'm at Belmore, and I'm driving a Belmore instead of Maroubra. Fuck yeah. When you, with your injuries and stuff, like, do they call the club to verify? Like how your progress is going, where your injuries are, or do you do a physical? You do a medical. I didn't do a medical before I signed, so I could have just like been busted. I thought about it, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm actually alright. Like, yeah, so it's I'm almost all right. like, I know like, I'm like right, a trust but system. I signed and it was like accepted, and I'm like, I didn't do any medicals to this club. Yeah, but I thought that usually they do do that, where it's like, yeah, that's the over like my physios and stuff would have sent over all my, you know, where history, his, progress history, reports, yeah, yeah, reports and histories and stuff, and my long list of surgeries and stuff like that. <laughs> But yeah, like I could have also been busted, like Currently, broken up, yeah. busted. But it would have Limped done me any favors. Yeah. No, like, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like? Um, so you, so how many games you played now since you've been there? The dogs. Yeah. I played the one that we had to buy, and then we got a game this week. Fuck, is that it? Jesus yeah. Christ, it just feels like it's been a bit longer. It feels like it's been the longest two weeks of my entire life. Yeah. yeah. And who are you playing this week? Knights. The fucking Knights. I might have tipped them. Sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's just all right. We're going to ruin it. Well, that's all right. We're going to ruin everyone's party for yeah, the last good. four games. Good. How is it? How is the vibe there? Is everyone is like it's obviously not been the greatest season of all time, but 
the future looks bright. The future does look bright. It looks bright. It's pretty exciting in that sense, yeah. right? It does look yeah, bright. Yeah, it does, yeah. And it's just like, you know, we can the only things we can control now is we want to win every game, you know, set the set the off season off right and and build now and, and train at this level and, and be playing at this level and these are our foundations. So it is still like we've got something to play for. I feel like I obviously want to perform and, and contribute and, and really, you know, get into the team and, and show that I can mix it and match. Mm. So that's for me. I'll be the best player I can for that. And I um, guess everyone's, you know, kind of fine motivation. How's training go when compare from when you're, like, comfortable in a system where you get your mates with everyone you know? And obviously when you're going head-to-head in, like, your, your, your tackling drills, I don't know. Contact. Like contact. You know everyone. You know everyone. It's a bit more like you know what you're in for. But when you're going to a new club, you kind of feel like you've got to prove yourself maybe. And also people who you're competing they're with They're also now. strangers, like... Yeah, you know, from, like, that's, that was the weirdest thing from like knowing everyone so well. I was almost there five years, knowing everyone like to like part of the furniture. Exactly right, like feeling part of the family. To go in a new club, like people, some of the guys were strangers, like to me. I never even knew the name, and I'm on the field, like, and the drills are different, and the people are different, and the plays are different, I'm, and I was just like, my head was spinning, and the training's different, and the systems are different. I was just like. <laughs> Well, and obviously they're not expecting me to like rock in, like bang, get a click. So yes. I know I'm not like heaps of pressure, but I'm also yeah. just like, so it's, it's a, str- a lot of like it's a stressful environment in the sense yeah. like I don't know what's going on. I was like, oh, okay, bang, you just you do your best and you just do there and you bounce around and just follow the follow the leader. Got a map on you. Where am I going? Yeah, where, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, new kid at school. Exactly yeah, the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, in the physical side of things, like, do you feel like you got to go a bit harder or not? Like, yeah, go a bit harder against like, do you have to show what you what you got? Yeah, I guess, but I'm I'm pretty um I'm pretty hard trained. Like I I've always been like people call it test mass training. Like the guys that go a bit hard. I like training hard. I go yeah, hard, and, and I'm always one of those guys anyway. Mm. So like I didn't change too much, and that's what I sort of said to Cam, the coach. I'm like, I love training. Like I'm not one of those guys that like oh, whinges, and I'll go 100 percent all the time. I love getting the train, love ripping in. So like if that's what you know, well, I can bring that if, as well. So it was a sort of I was pretty I was ripping in. Yeah. Do you like do you sit back and and see how much kick out puts on the bar before you sort of like go and maybe put a couple extras on <laughs> sort of, you know like fucking flex that way maybe back in the day not anymore I sort of like you do sometimes like okay you wanna, all right, let's see what we can do nah, nah. back in the day for sure I reckon a couple yeah. of years back the boys get a bit competitive <laughs> then it's like, you know, like my body's pretty bad at all at certain times you can't like you just gotta run your own race yeah so don't worry about stay it, in your own yeah, race yeah. yeah. pre-season's a good fun when you're not a sore and like you're sweet Boys get around each other like you can't do it. Yes, I can. And they're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> always yeah. hectic energy and that yeah. kind of stuff. And uh, everyone gets around each other on the max sets, and they start everyone screaming and banging weights. It's like a zoo. <laughs> it's like a zoo, man. It was it was good. That'd be infectious. Yeah, sure. it's oh, yeah. and then every year you you like the Daily Telegraph runs write some stupid fucking oh, report. Yeah. Royce Marty Hunt. to Powers, yeah, yeah. Marty to Powers deadlift like five hundred kilos. Royce Hunt's got the bench press <laughs> yeah. record. What I miss the most, man. I swear, like when we're at Redfern, it's obviously a bit more locked in. And I can once a month I just get naked in the gym, <laughs> like full naked, do like squats and everything, and like step ups and then flinging everywhere, or like budgies at a minimum. Like I was a couple once a week maybe, yeah, and nothing else. But then like get naked in the training of gang, I'm like ah, everyone be going nuts. <laughs> good cheer. And then we had like a nutritionist as a woman, so like had to sort of stop well, that. Like, and you know, and then when she wasn't here, I was like got naked again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was probably. walking around like when we went to Heffron when I was at South, so like oh, it's just not the same. You know? I can't because the offices are all there. Oh the yeah, you can't. The gym, I was like, I don't you like can't get the big fella out. I don't nah. like this place. I yeah, feel, I yeah, feel naked. Get me out I feel here. naked. Not being. Can you naked. get nude at Belmore now? Like obviously, maybe it's a bit too soon to whip I, the dick yeah, out. Yeah, not yet. Just to know you can. But I could. I think I could. It's yeah, not, that's almost part of anything for you when you're touring the facilities. Like I'd, I'd love to come check the club out before mm, I sign it. Yeah, yeah like, exactly right. I mean, promise yeah, right, I can get my dick out here. I can yeah. probably do it over there. No one's looking. Yeah, right. I could squat without my pants. There might be an opportunity at Mad Monday to carry on that that great Bulldogs tradition of trying to. Squeeze one into a schooner glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Adam Elliott, I've heard, proud, I've heard proud Adam Elliott yeah. tradition. The rumors are good, hey. No, well, that one was well. Is that well? A, I don't know. If that it's was a confirmed. I've heard. I've heard. I think yeah. that one was no, a good slug. It's been substantiated. Oh no, it's a monster. Yeah, it's yeah. been well, confirmed. Yeah, yeah, it's that's confirmed. Ru- it's one of the most confirmed rumors out. Oh, it's there. Yeah. one of the. Well, I can confirm it. Yeah, I can. You've seen it. May or may not have seen. May or may not have. Eighth wonder of the world, they call it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What were you there? What were, you, were you at the Mad Monday? Well, listen, no, we are, well, listen, we, we are. can't. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to get into yeah, it. Man. I'm not going to get into it. I can't but remember. I, listen, I don't I remember the specifics, it. but yeah, I saw it. No. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not going to tell you where and when, but, but we might. I'll tell you later. Yeah, we'll tell yeah, you later. Yeah. Scouts it's, on her, though. It's, <laughs> scouts on her. I'll tell you where. You seem like a trustworthy guy. Yeah, it's one of the other I'm a trustworthy gentleman. 
What's your opinion on the media? Do you sort of see them as a necessary evil? Do you see it as a pain in the ass? Do you see it as a great way to like mm. uh, put your profile in front of the fans? How do you they're, think that? they're essential to the game because they yeah. can be positive. Like, and it's obviously for the fans' interactions and all that kind of stuff that they help grow the game in that sense. And they, you know, it's really good for the fans to be able to interact with players and get those things out there. But on the other side of that, there are a lot of negative energies and and you know the talk shows that. You know, these guys are on and they got a platform and their job is to be negative and it's all hate speech and because it sells right yeah because it sells it's clickbait and, and that kind of stuff so it, it's just it's just it can't be like really controlled either right? like it's, it's it's necessary but it just needs to be sorted out i reckon but it never will be it's a bit poisonous sometimes do you feel like it's do people talk about potentially there being a benefit to having relationships with the journos because then they sort of leave you alone or because nah, if that... anything comes out they're hunting like they're just little hunters right. like yeah. and they think no one's friends with anyone like it's a dog eat dog and they, they'll pretend to be your mate and maybe they are but at the end of the day they want to get paid and the biggest story sells and if it's there it's there and, mm. and there's been some you know some worms in the industry it's not exactly a respectful industry sometimes i get along with some you know yeah like, but there are some that. But are, I know if, if anything comes out, they're going to print the story, and like that's their job. But I'm not taking it personally. I think some do. Like I'm like mm. the way talking to him. He did the story on him. I'm like also oh, like, if I if that was me in that job, and that's my job, like you can't really. It's not personal. Yes. So like if you attach that, if you attach the person, like it's not a personal attack. It's like yeah. he's a worm, and he gets paid to be a worm, and like they're going to be worms. Yes. Worms will be worms. Worms will worm. And yeah. Like, An know, earthworm will be. Also, you know? like, listen, if, an earthworm, if, if given the opportunity, <laughs> will eat compost and turn it into soil. <laughs> Uh, by virtue, by the very nature of their job, yeah, is to do that. Yeah, and also, like, yeah, and they like they eat trash, they eat but trash. they do, they mate. It does grow the game. It, it does. does. Like That's, and we talk about we're like, mate, you know, you compare rugby league to rugby union, and rugby league's in the back pages all the time because it's just yeah. a fucking. It, it is a it's bit a of gift. a. Earthworms turn <laughs> out soil. It is. It's a soap or soap opera. Is that the, it is, the it's, it's, it's a, a soap the opera. League players don't make them easy on themselves. There's always a scandal. Like, <laughs> That's no, it's, good as well. it's been scandal free for a little bit. Give us some it fun. actually has been it's scandal, been scandal free. free. I reckon, yeah. you know what? Also, about journos, they time it. Like, say, the final series coming up, they'll bring it up again. They'll hold on to a story for a while and they'll bring it up. So oh, there's more right. eyeballs. That's spot for wrong, I reckon. Right. Like, when it That's comes up, just do it. Yeah. Oh, and six months ago they try and derail things and they bring up random shit or like things get bored. They got to they sometimes they don't they might fabricate it, but they'll just you know dress Juice it, up it up a little bit. Yeah, oh, a bit of mayo, bit of mayo, and then they say they put all these little cowards to hide behind staff rider. Staff oh, writing, the staff writer shit, mate. Honestly, like Fuck. you gotta write this. Uh, you know, yeah. own up to it, you cat. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. honestly, yeah. get out of the shadows. You can pick a staff writer a mile away. Yeah, well, but like, like, what? as in an article, you're like, oh, yeah, man. yeah, allegedly, and like the hide behind these bullshit terms. I heard this. That I don't yeah. know why you. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't put a name to it, and like, unless it really is that you're like scared to, or it's like more like it's or basically it a like, lie. Yeah, exactly. It's you don't want to yeah. put your name to a story that could or not, could or not be true. Okay, it's like it's a bit. Well, it hasn't uh, been verified. Exactly. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So you got heard a rumor and print it like it's a fact. Well, <laughs> mate, like some of the rumors that we hear that are almost always bullshit. Like, imagine if you just started printing that stuff. Mm. So if, imagine if you had the power to do it. And mm. there's a slow news week. Oh, fuck! How are we gonna how we word this so it's not we're not defam like being you know defamation will come our way or defamatory, mm. but like yeah, or that's you can use whispers. words to like you know I don't know. It's just a wormy. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, well, they'd be running things by legal constantly. Like, can we say this? Can we say that? Yeah, well, you can say it, but you got to say it like this. Yeah, <laughs> and then say that no one wrote it. <laughs> say that Chat GBT wrote it. Yeah, yeah. but and on top of that, like staff if, in there. Yeah. if you guys are doing the right thing, you can also use it to your advantage. Like, you know, helps people build their brands, and, and social media does that too. Yes. But you can, it, it can be good if you use it for good. If you are good, if you want to be good, you can do good. You have played under some coaches of of note. Wayne Bennett being one of them. Yeah. Sticky down in Canberra. Yeah. Who else have you – who else have you – were you a Desert oh, Manly or – I had Trent Robinson at Roosters. Trent at the Roosters. Trent at the Roosters for my six minutes before yeah. I was punted. Shout out to Trent. Shout out to Robbo. And then who was it? Who was it Trent when Barrett. You're, Trent Barrett. First uh, year. First year coaching. The dark years of the Trent – sorry, Trent. We just yeah. – you know, you let go Nico Hines and we fucking sucked while you coached us. So <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. We forgive him. <laughs> um, but I guess what I was interested to know is like you've – you know, you're getting to getting to be, to be like coached by a Wayne Bennett, who's four billion games, and then <laughs> and then to someone like Cameron Seraldo. Not to compare, not to who's better, but just what's that experience like of having a hot? Can you notice the difference in experience, or is it just sort of another coach? 
I think he knows the experience. Like with Wayne, he just handled situations really good. He's, he coached like I don't know how many he was when he was 800, 900, whatever it was. Would have been in the 900s or yeah, something. Yeah, it's fuck loads. Um, I think that the, the just, numerical value is fuck just, loads of rugby He just knew league. how to handle situations. Like, And for me personally, having someone like a Wayne Bennett, he pulled me into his office like we first got there. He goes, mate, I, think, I was in a bit of trouble years leading up. You know, I was a bit, a bit of a wild... A bit of wild wire, whatever you call it. Wildcat. Wildcat. Wild, wild boy. Wild, wild boy. Yeah, whatever. Wild man. Yeah, yeah. Loose, loose was, I had a loose tag loose on unit. Me. Loose tag was wild floating around, gear. hanging off my shirt. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care what you've done, where you've come from. Like, I just care about what you do now. And what you do now, you can have you know, future at this club and I'll back you until until you show me that you're not worth backing. But until then, like, you know, you've got an opportunity here and I'll back you. And I went, well, someone like Wayne Bennett saying that, you know, I just went, you know, I'm just going to pull my head in here. Mm. And he was massive for me, like turning my career around. I wasn't doing much at the time and. Um, someone like him was it was so helpful just like he just he does back he, he, mm. he owns his word and whatever he says he'll do and had complete trust we had like conversations you know I wouldn't talk to my mates about like and he's just there with a, a level head and certain situations I remember we lost to Penrith by about 50 points in Dubbo maybe 21 2020 maybe yeah I remember that game yeah it was at the grand when, when, when I was run to the grand final that year and we lost by 50 2021 20, 21 when we had the grand final and he <laughs> the week no, the Monday yeah it was 21, eh? Yeah, it was 21, yeah. yeah. The COVID year. Yeah. So before we were in COVID, in the Goldie, he, um, we got beat by 50. Monday morning, he goes, no video. I'll meet you in the gym. And they're all in the gym waiting. Redfern, the naked centre. Mm. And he comes out the other door and, then, and all the lights are off and he, and he comes through the other door. There's two entrances. He comes in, <laughs> he rips his shirt off. He's got a tie around his head and he's like, God, he's coming to like, maybe like Stone Cold Steve Austin music and he's throwing out like, <laughs> Man, like his old rig, like <laughs> slumming his way in, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like doing his little dance, and everyone's just going nuts. Like, he's like, you know what, boys, I don't do sad, so leave that shit in Dubbo. That's oh, not who really? we are. Like, we're going to get out of training. I don't want to hear a word about it. We're not doing video. That's in the bin. That's in the bin. Let's go train. And what did you worry about? Everyone's like, just going, yeah. <laughs> 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 wow yeah, mate, So he just gets it He just it. gets it Like he knows you know, He's obviously a pretty introvert He's a very introverted guy But like Fuck he, it doesn't sound like it Exactly like He doesn't do that often That was like That's exactly <laughs> yeah, right. so He yeah, knows yeah. when to bring out The big guns yeah, You know like, what I mean If he does that every week cold. It loses Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, It's still cool But <laughs> yeah. it's like Oh it's Wayne again going, yeah, yeah, like, What song this What song this week mate Get your shirt on Wayne Put it back on mate Put it back on mate He was just the funniest guy man. That is so funny He was so funny That's awesome And so then Does he like does the music stop and he just starts like putting his shirt back on or is he like, <laughs> yeah. to the fucking field and he's yeah, like leading let's everyone go train out there. Like, Yeah, and then, and then like obviously we went off and like he would have to get his shirt on and get himself sorted. That's so <laughs> funny, dude. Like he's coming to the gym and he would be pumping like, you know, whatever, house music, just big techno music and he'd come into the gym, pull the speaker out, like the plug out of the thing. I'm not listening to that shit and then walk off and we'd like be silenced. Like, and he just, he's just and like, then like, that was the start of his way to the south. And then he sort of got a bit into it. But then, like, what, what are we listening to? I don't care. I'm not listening to that. And walk out of the gym. Just That's he right. run the joint. Yeah. yeah. And would he spray? Like, does he have spray in him? Yeah. He doesn't yeah. seem like his voice can even get loud. Yeah, but he's like, he sprays you in a, he's not joking, but it's still funny. Like, he's hammering you. And everyone's sort of laughing because, like, it's just funny. Like, is it similar to the way he is with the media when he's pissed off? Like, you know, you see him in press conferences, like, there was one the other day when. Perth, I don't know if you saw it, but like he, they lost, didn't they? The Dolphins must have lost, right? I saw that, yeah. And yeah. then there's a. I don't want to share my opinion with you. What's something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going. What's your opinion? It's my opinion. I don't know. It's my opinion. I and it was this WA it. journo who doesn't know what he's like, doesn't know what the yeah. fuck's going on. Yeah, he's here. Ruthless, like, I'm just trying man. to cover rugby league. If he's not yeah. on, he's not. He's and, not Rain, and Wayne just sort of like just yeah. dominated so him. He takes losses very bad, like, especially that was obviously their finals contention. But yeah. he, I've never, he even says, <laughs> like, say we have a Thursday, Friday night game, we have a loss, we play shit. He come in like he wouldn't even spray that much, but he'd just be quiet, like even worse. He's in the silent treatment. Yeah. He goes, oh, I hope he's having a shit weekend like I'm about to. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I hope he's having a shit weekend because I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> and then just walks off and like, oh. That's so funny. Oh, my but he's God. he's got the best chat, man. Like we had one of the Polynesian boys, I won't name him, but like he, might, he didn't tie in one time. And he's like, mate, I bet if it was a fucking hamburger, you would have tied in. Like, <laughs> you know, like, just little things like that. He just hammers people, That's but it, so it's good. so good. So even when he's so even when he's like 
given someone a bake, it's still kind of funny. Yeah, he's not it's still screaming, funny. ranting. He's not. He's never going to scream, ranting. Yeah, but he thought he, he. I've seen a few blow ups. Like he'll put it on you, and you know, like. Um, Fuck fire out Dad's upset Dad's he, upset After a game one time like Just just to me actually He comes up to me And he goes You were pretty shit tonight And then walked off And I was like I might have said Yeah yeah I know He goes mm. And walks off Boy, boy shit I wasn't good yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wasn't good But I was like Yeah I know Does that stay in your mind Yeah always? I'm like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Get me to train on Monday like, Yeah <laughs> hey, It was hectic because yeah. you do see coaches, you know, after the game, like you do see coaches all walking around the sheds and they're sort of shaking hands and they're, you know, like talking a little bit. And it's just, you want to know what they're you saying. You want to know what they're saying. It's yeah. just funny to, to envisage Wayne just sort of sauntering and just going, shit tonight, mate. Yeah. No. You were shit tonight. Thank you. That's yeah. fucking funny. He didn't, he didn't doesn't say much after the loss. He said, yeah, like, yeah, we'll talk about it one day. Have you ever shit weekend? Or just like, or sorry, I'll just won't talk at all. Really? Don't get changed. Like, and what was sti Sticky like? How long were you at the Raiders for? Uh, 18 months. Okay, so you're there for a minute. Did yeah. you say any? Did you say any blow ups? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's an angry man. He's an angry man. <laughs> did you a, get on with Sticky? Like I got on with it. We had no issues. Um, like we, yeah, I had had no problem with Sticky. He was just, um, it was a pretty stressful environment in Canberra. Um, yeah. and is that when, down to, what, is that down to his style though? I think his style, yeah, yeah. his style. Um, there was was halfway through seventeen, the back end of seventeen, and the start of oh, and all of eighteen. And how were the gut Raiders going then? I can't quite remember. That was near grand final time, was it? Or did they get 19? Uh, they was got 19 20. grand final. So I left Canberra and went to South at the like I did first like six weeks of four, four or five weeks of preseason at Canberra, then went to South before Christmas. And leading into 2019 season when we had South v Canberra in the prelim. Oh. And they beat us. And they and Canberra beat Shit. South. Fully. Yeah, yeah. I was dead so, on it. So he, he so it was stressful down there. Well, I was yeah, I found it stressful. He was yeah. very, like it was very rigid, like it was just a stressful environment, much more than it needed. Like to be, intense, intense, yeah, always. Yeah. And you make a mistake and you just feel like, oh, man, what's what's going to come here? Right, yeah, I know. A couple of guys wouldn't. I think it was a couple of guys that got a bit, you know, all good, but some people. It, it, and do you think that's a? Do you think that's a like horses for courses? Some people are happy in yeah. certain environments. Like some so, players yeah. can react. Didn't fit me. Hey, don't care. Oh, the boys were mad and the club was solid. I just well, Canberra as a whole wasn't for me. I missed the beach, missed me mates. You, did you say Canberra is a whole? Because I do as agree. A, as a whole, as a whole, wasn't for me. I heard is a. I, I, I heard Canberra is a whole. Is a or as a. As a, as a, as a Canberra is a whole, and take I it, like, didn't want to fucking take it all you want. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't wouldn't be moving back anytime soon. No, it's not the greatest joint. Um, and so you. You know, like you're talking about how a lot of the things you want to do, like you're trying to looking at life after footy and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, you got the potty with Toby yeah. stuck in the middle. Yeah, is that where you wanted to go specifically? Is that just one of the things uh, that you're sort of trying to do? Just something you, I wanted to try, and I was yeah. just like, oh, procrastinate a bit, lazy and stuff like that. So, but we yeah, did that just, just to try it out, and we liked that. I started a consulting business with a mate of mine. Just um, what are you consulting? We consult with a we consult with other companies. So at the moment we're working with this uh, recruitment agency called Swift, mm -hmm. and so like we sort of contact businesses, sponsors, and stuff. Maybe they won't talk to them, but they'll talk to me and my mates got good contacts, and we put them in place, and then they give them the job, and then we sort of mentor them if they got like any troubles. That there's these kind of roles like white collar, blue collar. It's mainly like labour hire or forklift drivers, something like receptionists and stuff as well. But they don't have like the coping mechanism. They just leave the job apparently. They don't talk to the boss that what's going on. They just leave. So we yep. also take on that like, mentoring role, make sure they're alright, keeping the job. They're happy. We're happy. The boss is happy. Keep how'd you there. How'd you get into that? Mean people. One of the guys like, oh, would you do this? And then we thought like, there's like a little structure here. And I'm like, oh, I'll set up a business so we can put it through there. I don't want to get paid from that or I lose it all in tax. And then. And then we sort of just kept thinking of ideas and we structured it like that. And then, yeah, we just started doing that, just meeting people. And How long has it been going? Uh, about four months, maybe. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that's interesting. That's why we just, like, we haven't really dove into it too much. I was still playing footy. Mm. So it's pretty passive. Um, but yeah, just meet sponsors, more sponsors, getting to, like, trying to sell it as well. And um, we, we want to sort of, at one stage, we want to go and talk to kids at school and sort of relay, you know, my, my um, journey and, and mm. like how sport was, you know, my saviour and you know, what around it and building other stuff around it and just sort of, you know, our, our experiences. We did that once, but um, haven't dove into it much lately. Um, Do you, does that excite you doing that sort of work? Do you talking to kids? Well, yeah, and then the consulting work you've been doing. I wouldn't say it's riveting. Like, it's, a, it's cool. I like, meeting different people, having different conversations, like, learn about business and, yeah. and it's taught me a bit. Um, it's probably a bit of an intro. Mm. Um, make a bit of money on the side as well. I wouldn't say like I get out of bed excited about it, 
But the kids stuff, I want to do some kids with youth and uh, I work with kids and, and that kind of stuff. Like, I, you know, without getting into it, I had a bit of a checkered childhood as well. Like, sort of, you know, we had to be able to relay my story and relate to kids and say, you know, this is the path that I went on. And, you know, without sport and stuff, I don't know where I'd be and, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm big on that. That's sick, sick dude. Mm. That's cool. Mm. Really cool. Yeah. Bloody earth. Well, mate, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having good me. Good chat. Man. Yeah, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I fucking too. loved it. That, I've that, loved it. That Wayne Bennett... Stone Cold thing. Oh, is, man, I can tell you why I've been stories for days, mate. That like that'll that'll stay with me forever. That's one of the great <laughs> yarns. Like I can see it. I that, saw it in my head. I, although I, I can saw, see, I can see this. I but. see Wayne coming in in Stone Cold jeans, probably knee braces as well. Yeah, yeah. Right, so one more man. Wayne Bennett story. Yeah, man. Like, give I mean, it like, to he, me. He just he'd always be in the gym me. doing his old man exercises, keeping fit. His little chin ups and pretty strong, pretty fit for an old guy. Yeah. Loves training. And boys would do like, so we'd be doing max bench, like it goes at 130, 140 on the bench and like pumping them out. And he just comes along and just like starts stripping all the weight off, all the weight off. And then he pumps out like four reps on 60 and just walks away. Like it just looks at everyone like, yeah, you put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> and like just walks up and keeps doing his little rolls. And <laughs> just takes all the yeah, weight off. Right right his dick <laughs> <through the gym. laughs> like, Wayne, dude. Those little offerings, mate. Yeah, yeah. just little yeah. subtle. You know, I'm the, I'm the king. I'm the king. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing it for so long. That's what's crazy. And like having, like being able to relate to people our age, like when you're so like I, different I, generations. That's what I mean. He's had to right? relate to different, to different generations. generations been of for forty people. years, thirty-five years, or something. Because like men now aren't like they were nah. forty years ago, no. right? No. Completely. And, and you could be, That's you could be a bit. He more relates to everyone or individually. Or like he doesn't blank anyone in. He's just like, yeah, he just got it, man. Fuck yeah. Got That's it. cool. Got Mate, it. thanks again. Yeah, cheers, Great boys. to young. Legend. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. Could you two just not talk anymore?